Hey, it's Captain Joe here with Head First Fishing, along with my good friend, Captain Scott Subor of Head First Fishing Adventures. And we're here talking today about how to get ready for a fall kingfish. They're here, buddy. They are here. The big schools are gonna be showing up soon. The early birds are definitely showing up and biting. We wanna get people ready for this big event that happens twice a year. The big schools come in the Tampa Bay area. And personally, it's my favorite type of fishing um, to be in the near shore waters. I love kingfish. I love that strong, fast bite. I like the runs. Um, I just can't get enough. So I'm definitely ready for those big schools to show up. Um, so Captain Scott, let's go ahead and kick things off with what we need to do to be successful. And we'll start out with topic one, the equipment we need to bring to the game in order to be able to handle these big fish. Because these fish are, are can get seriously big and seriously strong. And even the small ones will test your tackle out. The most important thing to kingfishing is rigging up the night before. Most of your fish are caught in the garage the night before you ever go out kingfishing. If you're set up and you have a proper uh, proper rig ready to go, you're going to be a lot more successful than trying to uh, adapt on the, on the fly out there. I guess we're going to talk about rods and reels first. So what kind of rods do you like using? Spinning gear, conventional gear, everybody's got their preference. Right. You know, there's some, uh, some more rods and reels, a little bit more versatile these days. It really depends on situation. For me, if I'm live bait fishing, live bait drifting, I usually go to a conventional reel with a clicker. Fish go. on, that's Good a big fish. fish. Nice. That's a big fish. And I want that set um, pretty loose. Uh, enough to where it doesn't overrun itself. You want enough tension so when the fish takes the bait and you hear that clicker going off, it's not so loose that the spool overruns itself, but it's pretty loose to where that king just runs and he doesn't really know what's going on yet. He can take that bait and move with it and then I pick it up, maybe let him eat it for a couple of seconds and I put it in gear and start cranking and I stick him. And, and sometimes when they hit, they're already moving 40, 50 miles an hour on those live baits. Sometimes that's the case. You know, you know each fish might hit a little bit different. But for live bait scenarios, that's what I like. Yeah, that loose drag is, is the most important thing you can do when you're out there fishing. I mean, two, three, four pounds of drag, just enough to where it's, it's not pulling off the reel as you're moving the bait along. So you said when he eats the bait going 40, 50 miles an hour, he may snip the tail end of it off and catch a stinger in the shoulder, but he's going so fast he's already hooked. And if you got a, a real tight drag going on, you're gonna pull that little six or that little four treble hook out of his shoulder every time. So if he's skin hooked, just let him go, let him take off, let him wear out, fish him on that loose drag, have a, a rod with a nice light action tip, uh, a slow action tip. Um, it's a lot more forgiving when they're up close to the boat they take off again, they come back to life, you're getting those big head shakes. Where they eat and they come 12 feet out of the water. Um, you know, everything's about just a, a, a subtle fight. Uh, you're not cranking these guys out of the rocks like you would with a grouper. Sure. So tackle is, is definitely paramount. Um, what I prefer to use if I'm trolling and trying to cover water is, again, a conventional rod or a, a big spinning rod, but I prefer a conventional rod and a couple lures that are going to cover different water depths in the column. Some people like using downriggers, you can certainly do that, um, but lip plugs and uh, diamond spoons and jigging spoons seem to be really, really productive for me. Uh, one is a crystal minnow, seven inch crystal minnow, um, and they come in different diving, diving styles and diving depths. You can, you can pick up some that will go 30, 40 feet down, uh, what I like doing is covering the top three, four feet of the water column, mm -hmm. and then even firing a couple of diamond spoons back behind that right. and pulling those six to eight to nine miles an hour. All right, Scott, let's talk about one of my favorite setups for kingfish and just, you know, general saltwater fishing for some of your larger fish, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's big gag grouper, king mackerel, AJs, tarpon. This rod and reel right here, I think, is uh, one of the better things you can buy, and it will be a lifetime rod and reel. Mm -hmm. This is an Avet LX 6.0. It's got a really good retrieve speed on it, and it's paired to a Star Rods. It's a seven foot, medium action, but it has a little bit of a soft tip, so it's a little more sensitive. Great rod and reel. Got a Rapala x rap Magnum on there and the Dorado Mahi Mahi Dolphin Fish Pattern. 
Depends on where you're living, what it's called. <laughs> but uh, this this lure will dive to 30 feet. So if you want to dig up the fish down there in the deeper waters, you can get them. Yep. But this holds a lot of line. That's one of the reasons I got it. Holds a lot of line. That's 40 pound mono. There's a lot of line on there. And uh, this is also a reel that's made out of aluminum. So this reel is going to be durable. It's not going to corrode. The gearing in it is precision. It's strong and it's going to be able to handle those long runs. Um, your drag system is very important with kingfish, mm -hmm. wouldn't you say? Absolutely. It's the most important thing. Uh, Single yeah. most important thing. Yeah, if you got a sticky drag, <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna pull hooks. Kingfish eat going so so fast, and a lot of times they're hooked in the shoulder, they're hooked in the top of the head. They're not hooked real solidly in the mouth, and they're really 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 good at pulling hooks off. So if yeah, you yeah. don't have a light tip, if you don't have a light drag, and if you don't have a smooth drag, you're gonna lose fish. Whether it's on the bite, the first run, or at the boat right before you stick them on the gaff, um, you know they're they're gonna pull off. So a good, good, solid avid reel with three, four, five hundred yards of line. I don't know how much forty you got on there. Um, is is just what you know you need for catching these kingfish. Whether you're fishing from a kayak, from a pier, or from a boat. And uh, you know most of us out here in West Central Florida are fishing on on boats for these kingfish. Just let them run. Have three, four, five hundred yards of line on there. Let them go. Let them go on that first run. Turn the boat around. Chase them down, be in no big hurry. They're sprinters. They burn out after the first couple of runs and take your time with them. If you take your time on these fish and you don't force them, you're going to put a lot more in the boat. Exactly. You know, they are definitely notorious and loved for those big long runs. And that's why I would say, and most people would agree, that 300 yards is the minimum entry for sure. kingfish. Minimum entry, you need 300 yards of line. And you need to make sure your line's in good condition. You don't want to show up with a lot of nicks and scratches and stuff in your line. Not a single one. They're they're gonna they're gonna break that. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention was, what are kingfish notorious for? What do they do when they make that long run? What often happens right after they stop? What do they do? Oh, they'll turn around and come right back to the they boat. They turn times, right yeah. back around and come right for you. And that's why a reel that has a, a sufficient pickup, good enough gear ratio you're going to be able to get that line. It won't go completely slack and you're left wondering what happened. And then the line was slack. The hooks weren't buried in there. Good. You didn't have tension. Hooks well, fall out. Which brings you to another point. Never, never, never stop winding. Keep winding, keep winding, keep cranking until the, the hook of the lure is back to the boat. A lot of times those fish will burn off 200 yards of drag and then come right back and come under the boat. And they'll put this big giant belly in the water. And until you get that slack picked up, you don't know if he's gone or not. So just, Keep winding. Keep winding. I agree. Uh, uh, let's talk for a second about uh, these conventional reels. These round reels are called conventionals. They've been around for a long time. But there's a type of reel that basically has a guide on it that goes across back and forth here that guides your line across the spool. With this one, you have to do it by hand. But there's a little eyelet on some of them called a level wind. And level winds are not desirable for kingfish just simply because they're so freaking fast. Yep. They're great, great for casting plugs at snook and redfish. Um, level wind is your classic bass reel. Um, if you're throwing a conventional bass, you're typically using a level wind. Saltwater makes some, some larger ones, but we don't recommend them for, for these kingfish. Um, these fish can zip off so much line so fast they can actually outrun the level wind and break the mechanism. That so, puts an angle on the line too. Yeah, uh -huh, absolutely. Um, so avoid those. Use a, use a reel where there's there's no inhibitor there and you can manually guide line back and forth with your thumb back onto the spool. All right, so let's talk about spinning gear for these guys. This reel right here that we have is the Penn Spin Fisher V6500 LL. LL stands for live liner which is that mechanism right there. And that achieves the same thing as a clicker on a conventional reel. Um, reason I like using spinning gear is it's versatile. You can th you can cast with it, you can bottom drop with it, you retrieve lures a lot more versatilely with this. But you can also stick this in the rod holder and use it just like a conventional. Just click that open. When the fish goes off, that goes shut. You come tight to it, and you're fighting them on full drag, whatever you decide that's going to be. 
and that's a, a great great system right there we got this loaded up with 20 pound braid fit i think we got 490 yards on there so just let them go that's that's what we were talking baby. about before just let them go let them go let them go um i'll put a piece a uh, 40 pound fluorocarbon in front of that, maybe five or six feet long, just to pre prevent tail whips. Uh, chunk of 12 to 18 f uh, inches of wire. Typically, I'm using a number four, and and uh, a stinger rig with a six aught. I'm sorry, with a uh, number six treble hook and a two aught J hook, and that's as easy as it is. What do you think about that reel? I think it's a great reel. You know, the Shimano Bait Runner, when it came on scene, that was like the reel to have mm -hmm. that came out and allowed you to fish live bait with a spinning reel, the closed bail, and just had this gear system where you could put it in and out of gear. So you would cast out, you got a closed bail, you put your bait runner system in gear, and when the fish grabs it, it's just taking it right off the spool as if it was already running. Um, Anyway, as if you'd already hooked it, it just pulled it right off the spool, then you click it in gear. Now that engages your main drag system, and then you hook up. Yep. Yep. So, Absolutely. Penn came up with their own. Uh, they have they have it called the Live Liner. Uh, I like this one, but uh, you certainly couldn't go couldn't go wrong with the original, mm -hmm. the Bait Runner. So, spinning reels, definitely versatile. This rod in particular, I've talked about this rod before in a, in a video a while ago. This is actually a rod that is set up for casting baits uh, off of piers. Uh, it's got big guides. I've caught a lot of kingfish on it, cobia, redfish. Really, really great rod. Uh, works just fine in a boat, but uh, the builders happen to have pier fishermen in mind when they built it. But uh, And this thing's seen some battles. I've caught monster sharks on it and everything like that. Well, thanks for coming by Head First Fishing today and checking out our video, How to Prepare for King Mackerel. we got more videos coming up in the series. Keep an eye out on our uploads, and we'll catch you later.